Good afternoon. How are you doing? Uh, I hope everybody is well. I am a little late responding to a few comments um, back and forth. Uh, and it's been, I guess, about a week since I've made a video. We, uh, we had a, a nor'easter, a major winter storm that dumped 12 inches of snow overnight. Um, and, you know, so that was just digging out, digging out that. And uh, I had said I had work commitments. But as we get cl closer to the holidays, things are normalizing and getting better. So today I have a new car from a new brand for me that some of you may have seen, you may have, and you may be considering. And this one's an interesting one for a couple of reasons, not just because it's a new brand, but because it's a vehicle that uh, different companies are coming out with and there is something very similar to this um, that I'm not sure people are aware aware of the connection. So, uh, you know me, I like to play know-it-all, so I'm going to try and school you out. And then I'm going to compare, uh, I have not taken this off the base yet, I'm going to compare this Para 64 to see how the details are uh, I'm going to compare it to some other premium brands or near premium brands. Um, how many cars do I have here to show you? Four, six, eight, ten, twelve. About 17 cars of the roughly 26 brands that I have. Um, and they all had to have a minimum level of detail um, or being special to be shown. I'm not going to be just showing, you know, mainline matchboxes or Hot Wheels, uh, mainline. Um, but, and then I'm going to be showing some, what I consider smaller, obscure brands from U.S. brands. Uh, I've obviously got some, uh, overseas brands here. So, uh, there should be something to appeal to all corners of the globe here. Uh, and, um, for those that have Para 64 in their collection, uh, please comment, you know, what you have from them and what you think of them in the comments. So very similar to the Inno 64 Integra um, that I opened up a few weeks ago, this comes in an acrylic case inside a cardboard sleeve. Uh, there was actually cellophane over this in addition. And this is Mitsubishi Motors 3000 GTO, or as it was more commonly known in the United States, the 3000 GT. Um, and since I don't believe... That, so there's a car here in the United States that was sold that was a um, rebadge, an engineered sort of... Uh, I see sticker there. Sticker there. And that is the Dodge Stealth that Auto World is coming out with. So some may not realize the close connections between Dodge and Mitsubishi for say the last 50 years. Um, they've had a partnership, uh, especially overseas, where uh, uh, Chrysler Plymouth Dodge did not have a lot of small cars and no real four cylinders, so they started rebadging uh, some Mitsubishi Colts and Gallants um, and uh, some other Mitsubishi, and they would use those to fill the gaps in their in their uh, overseas presence, especially in Australia um, and Asia, and to, to a lesser degree. Europe. Uh, in Europe, Chrysler bought other groups like uh, Talbot and Roots to little success. But they had great success uh, in the 80s and 90s in, in the United States. Um, badge engineering things like the Plymouth Colt, which was a Mitsubishi Colt, and uh, using Mitsubishi engines in uh, some of their own, uh, like the minivans and uh, different cars. So, uh, when the Mitsubishi 3000 GT came out, uh, Dodge dealerships really wanted 
the uh, you know the same pizzazz. So they had a slightly different body, but same mechanicals. So the Auto World Dodge Stealth that's coming out is an Americanized version of the Mitsubishi 3000 GT. So this has a nice display base. And we're going to get that off there. And luckily I didn't make you watch me take over half a dozen other cars off bases. Uh, I figured that would be too much. Sorry. As I knock stuff around here. So let's take a look at this. So it looks nice. It, uh, it has lensed headlight inserts which are a little tough to see because of the green paint, um, but they're there. Uh, the green paint is nice. Now, now, when I ordered this, I ordered just a plain white one, and the, uh, the vendor emailed me and said, oh, we, we sold the last of the white ones. We have a green one. So I thought it was going to be solid green, and it came in this Puma number no. 3 race livery, and... I'm okay with that. I, I don't do a lot of race cars, but uh, sometimes it's okay. So, lensed taillight details. Um, see where it says GTO there. Uh, ours would just say 3000 GT Spider VR4, um, whatever the trim level, whatever the options. So, these had um, either a V6 or up to a twin turbo V6. Uh, and either front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. And, of course, the top of the line was the twin-turbo V6, all-wheel drive, four-wheel steering, with so much technology for um, the four-wheel steering and uh, traction control and so forth. They were just technological wonders when they came out. And you can see the three red diamonds and their partnership with uh, Chrysler and Hyundai... Um, and even, uh, I think, to, well, so that partnership there was called TriStar Motors. And then there was GEM, um, Global Engine Manufacturing, where all three companies at one point shared different engines. So this is a nice metal body. This is a plastic base screwed on. Um, authentic wheels, and these feel like rubber tires, and they look like slicks. So, but they do feel rubber. So this is pretty nice. And um, this was reasonable. Uh, I believe with shipping, it was $20. And uh, a lot of these premium cars to come to the United States, that's the sweet spot that, you know, plus or minus $20, say between 15 and 24. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with this purchase. Will I run after a lot of Paris 64? Probably not. They, they tend to be more race cars um, or, you know, cars like this with a race livery. And um, this is a beauty. But uh, as you can see, it's got mirrors and it looks like they've got silver paint on them. Now, let's check which side the steering wheel is on. And it is right hand drive, JDM. Japanese domestic market right there. Uh, the details are pretty good, and it's 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 a nice weight to it. It's nice details. So I'd say it compares very favorably to the NO64. Uh, a lot of the same attributes, plastic base. Um, these are like a hard plastic or rubber tire, but authentic wheels, details, lensed inserts, um, a two-tone interior. So the in, this particular NO64 is just a bump up over this. And again, similar price. And this is a street version, although um, there are quite a few from the NO64 that are also race versions. Uh, again, proper right-hand drive for this. So um, I wonder... I, I mean, let's face it. You can say that a diecast brand is... European, like Norev or Shuko, or uh, American, like Greenlight, Hot Wheels, Matchbox, uh, uh, Auto World, but all of them are made in China, um, and we all prefer licensed, um, and these all seem to be licensed.
So all praise sent on a line tends to go to Tomica Limited Vintage. And Tomica Limited Vintage is very nice. So let's see. Here is that RX-7 again. Lens details. This has a metal base, metal body, rubber tires, high level of detail. Um, slightly heavier than the Inno or the Para. Um, and people love the detail on TLV, as do I. But my biggest problem with TLV is the cost. The cost and the fact that a lot of the TLV vehicles are, uh, when you say J Japanese domestic market, oh, most definitely, but they're, they're not cars that were exported or some of them are just little um, Isuzu 1600s or uh, little city cars and so forth, or even Japanese limousines or, or, or they're, they're just, I, I personally don't see the appeal. Um, so I would not chase after a lot of TLV, uh, especially because some of the ones that are, that are desirable to me are $50. Um, so as a lot of guys chasing diecast cars and others will say, you know, you, you collect what you like, you collect what you want. Now, what I've been doing with this journey over the last few months is trying to get an example of different brands to see what I want to collect, what I want to get more of. Um, and here's another one, um, Mini GT, this BMW M3 that I've shown again, um, lens details, metal base, screwed, rubber tires, authentic wheels. Um, this was very reasonable. It was less than $15 shipped. Uh, and I would say that the details and quality go head to head with TLV. Um, here is that very nice uh, Renault RS 1.0 um, special race car from Norev that Saul sent me. This is a beauty. Uh, lens details. It's um, plastic base and part of rubber tires detailed. Lens uh, headlights. These taillights are painted, but very, very well detailed. Now, it's hard to say what these uh, are going to cost coming to the United States. Um, I only have one other Norev. Uh, this was a gift. The other Norev I have was not quite as to the standard. Um, so I need to do more. But uh, Norev, uh, like TLV, is predominantly French vehicles. Uh, Citroën, Peugeot, Asha... Uh, Renault, all fine cars, um, but again, not not something that's present in the U.S. market. So, is it blasphemy to compare these Para and Inno one sixty fours to M two? Um, here is an M two daily driver, and now this one has no opening parts. But then again. None of these do. Uh, the hoods don't open, not even on the BMW, the Acura, the Renault, none of these. So, uh, but, so the criteria here would be, does it have lens or highly detailed? Uh, this is painted uh, headlights, but lensed taillights. Um, plastic base screwed, metal body, rubber tires, authentic rims, high level of detail. And this is a lower cost M2 because it doesn't have the opening parts. So would I would I put it on the same level playing field as a TLV? No. But it's close um, and for the American market more relevant than some of these. And again, my my perspective is going to be from the American market. Uh, I, I uh, love foreign cars, Australian. I love uh, European, uh, Japanese. I, lo I love all cars. Um, but if it's a car that we've never seen on our roads, it's cool. But, how, you know, how cool? Uh, it has to be something. So the M2. 
so for the price, as I said, um, th these uh, can be just south of $20. This is about $15. Uh, with shipping, this was um, more than $25. I think it was close to $30. It was one of the more expensive cars that I've ever bought. Um, again, not apples to apples, but Auto World is considered very highly detailed. Now, um, this square body has an opening hood, detailed engine, but only painted details, no lens, but very high level of detail, metal body, metal base, rubber tires, very authentic rims, and, and good weight to it, probably among the heaviest among these. Um, and here in the United States, they can, they can be picked up for, uh, on the pegs for well under $10.00. Um, they do get pricey on the secondary market, especially these square bodies. So that's Auto World. <clears throat> Green light um, can go anywhere from the Moto World, which are, you know, okay, to their standard line. And this is a standard line. This is the hot hatches. And not all of them have lensed inserts, but this one does. Lensed inserts, very authentic OZ rims. Very authentic Tampo painted details, but also this has an, op an opening hood with a highly detailed engine. Now, painted tail lights are not lensed, and the weight of this is very substantial. And this is something that was not available on U.S. shores, so it's not a prerequisite for me to collect, but it is something that is fairly well-known and exciting. Um, Hot Wheels does some premium stuff like this uh, Mercedes here, and I have that Cobra, um, and they do some opening parts, uh, and they can get very expensive, even for a mainline car that's popular on the secondary market so but that seems to be what most people collect here's a matchbox premium this is the one with the uh, uh, metal body uh, plastic base rubber tires very authentic rims and details tampo no inserts um but and this is an older one so i don't i may be unfair to bring those out all right Here's another brand that very often gets mentioned in the same breath is Kyosho. And you know I love my BMW Z8s. So uh, lensed inserts for the headlights, high level of detail, uh, plastic base, but rubber tires, very authentic rims, beautifully detailed interior, and painted taillights. And again, sometimes the taillights is just a matter of how do you get lensed inserts that small? So that's Kyosho. And I have several Kyoshos and I have more coming. Uh, Kyosho um, on the secondary market is still fairly reasonable. Less expensive than TLV. Um, and there are quite a few JDM vehicles, European vehicles, uh, fewer American vehicles, but I do have that Kyosho Cobra. That I showed. Um, here's one of my favorite new brands from Europe, is Shuko, and I have two two of these so far. I have more uh, that are on my wish list. Uh, and again, lensed headlights, high level of detail, metal body, metal base, screwed together, rubber wheels, lens taillights, and this was ten dollars. Uh, maybe 15 shipped less expensive than TLV but I would put this up against TLV and I would put this slightly above the Inno and Paris 64 um, I just showed those Malibu International uh, this Ford Focus from the other day with lensed headlights lens taillights, some very good fair detail, plastic base, 
uh, hard rubber, hard plastic rubber tires, authentic rims, a good level of detail. This was $10 shipped. Uh, maybe not on the level of a TLV or even a Mini GT, but close to some of these others. Um, here was one of my very first uh, quote unquote premium uh, brands, and this is a, another BMW Z8. This one from Auto Art, and this one um, was a bit of a disappointment after I compared it to the Kyosho. Just Tampo details up front, no inserts, but very authentic details, a little bit lacking there. Plastic base, metal body, um, and these Auto Arts, um, I believe, are out of production, but can still be found on the secondary market for a fair price. Um, I'm just going to go for some of the more detailed American brands. So this is a Ravel, um, and this is the Bullet Mustang. Um, and opening hood, hold on, I forget, is this one? No, this does not have opening doors. Opening hood, so plastic base, metal body, screwed, uh, authentic rims, a little too much chrome flashing there. Rubber tires, high level of detail, um, no inserts. Now, they also make the low riders um, that are very detailed with uh, opening trunks for the uh, hydraulic systems. Uh, they can get a little pricey. Uh, then, a very detailed collection is the Shelby Collectibles. Um, but it, again, a limited appeal, limited scope, because it's going to be mostly uh, Shelby vehicles, although there is one uh, Austin DB4, I believe, race car uh, that they sell. And these have opening hoods, opening doors, high level of detail, metal body, metal chassis, rubber tires, uh, and lensed headlights on this one. And I have several of these. Uh, so I can understand how they may not appeal broadly uh, overseas. Um, and then <clears throat> one other brand that I have is the Ertl American Muscle. Uh, again, this is one that's not made anymore, but uh, depending on the vehicle, it will have lensed headlights, lensed taillights. Uh, this one has an opening trunk, an opening hood, and high level of detail. So these quote-unquote premium brands, um, you have to decide, um, is it something you like? Uh, or are they worth the price? So, so far, Paris 64, I'll look for more, but not if they're crazy race graphics. In 064, again, they're, they're nice. My, my rising star this year brand wise that I will definitely seek out more is Shuko and I had just commented on uh, Chasing Diecast Cars video about that uh, TLV obviously beautiful highly detailed cars but too expensive for my taste and some of them are too obscure uh, I will look at more Norev uh, Mini GT, they have some cars that I, I'm watching. Of course, the new uh, Corvette C8, some other BMWs. Um, Mini GT is a great brand. They have Land Rover Defenders. They have quite a bit. Um, Auto World, um, as, as they come out into the store, I will not seek them on the secondary market. Green Lights, Green Lights, my new addiction also. Um, but they can be, they can be disappointing with quality. Um, Kyosho, I actually have several Kyoshos that I'm waiting for. Uh, are they TLV? Are they even Mini GT? No, but they do have some, um, just fantastic cars from all over the globe. So, Paris 64, compared to some of the premium brands, um, what do you think? Um, do you have Paris 64? Do you have NO 64? 
do you think that I'm being too biased? Uh, wow, this video has already run to 25 minutes. Um, okay, so I will be doing another video tomorrow. That would be uh, <clears throat> Sunday the 20th. Sunday, December 20th, I will be doing a video. And that will be the video that you need to comment on to be entered into the giveaway. No longer a subscription milestone giveaway, uh, just a uh, it's the holidays giveaway. Um, coincidentally, we did reach, I did reach 50 subscribers. Uh, Andrew in uh, Sweden, who is uh, um, Canadian, and now I can't remember, I know it's Maple Leaf, uh, Maple Leaf Matchbox, I believe. Uh, I'll try and look it up. Thank you, Maple. Um, Andrew, he's my 50th subscriber. Um, so tomorrow I'll do a video um, and I'll show off a car. And then at the end, in the middle of the end of the video, I'll say you, you need to comment with this phrase below. And then next week, I'll use the random comment generator picker for, for the uh, giveaway. Uh, so uh, everybody be safe. Uh, stay warm if, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. If you're down south uh, in the Southern Hemisphere, um, have a beer for me on the beach, if that's possible. So uh, thank you for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe, comment down below. Um, tell me what premium brands you're chasing or considering. Have a good day.